Coach, how has the running back room kind of worked so far? The tape, how has he kind of adapted to the offense so far as you guys have kind of get? You know they're they're doing well. They're they're learning the system. Some of the newer players. Um, it's really hard to evaluate when you're not in pads. You're not tackling or running. Uh, but he's he's someone who picks things up quick. So um, that part of the transition has gone well. What about Ryan Ranch? What makes him so reliable and consistent on your offensive line? Well, he's smart. He's talented. Um, I think he's got. Uh, He's got a real good poise and patience about him in his game. So, you know, he's one of those guys that that's pretty steady and uh, and and extremely smart when it comes to uh, things that can happen relative to protections or in the run game. Um, he's doing well. Are you finding it challenging to find new ways to use Alvin in the offense? Um, no, uh, I think you know right now we're going through an installation in. You know, a little, a little bit different than when we get into a season relative to game plan. Um, you know, so you're kind of working your way through what we're wanting to install. There's a few things you put in, um, but as we get closer to the start of the regular season, you know, we'll begin to focus more on specific matchups. Sean, I know it's hard to evaluate offensive linemen in mm -hmm. practices like this, but mentally, how is Eric McCoy handling good. the install? Yeah, also? real good. Real good. He got a lot of work today with the first. We've been ro rotating, you know, with a lot of these positions. But, um, but no, he's someone that I think uh, learns well. I know that you all worked out the, the rugby player. Yeah. How, how do you evaluate that given his learning curve is maybe so far behind? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, just because you know, yesterday was the first time he, he'd ever, you know, in the workout really done anything relative to, to uh, this sport. Um, but look, we're looking at him for three days, you know, as a safety. You know, he's a guy that, um, you know, the vision would be for special teams, that type of thing. Um, so, it, but look, for, for him, uh, to his credit, you know, he, he's starting from square one. You know, the first time we get out and stretch today is the first time he stretched, you know, relative to this sport. But, uh, but he seemed pretty bright yesterday, you know, just picking up the drills we were asking, you know, to do. Talk about what a positive it is to have Cam Jordan under contract for three more years. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, I, I didn't see. I'm coming off the field, so, um, but but I knew they were working on uh, an extension, and, and I think that uh, it's much deserved. And you know, he's someone that uh, has been, you know, extremely productive, and um, so I, I think it's you know a good thing. He's always been a a very good player coach. Do you think he's become an elite player in this league? Yeah, listen, I, I don't know. You know, I think when his career is over, we can decide the elite, the great, the good, the very good, the tens, the eights. The I know he's good enough right now. I'm watching him. You know, I think he's, you know, one of the better defensive ends, you know, run and pass. So I'm glad he's on our team. What's Sean, he bring also just from a personality standpoint? He seems like kind of a heartbeat or leader on this team. I mean, how does that he's one of the leaders. Yeah, look, he's he's. Um, should we go back to the eleven draft when we took him? Um, I, I think uh, number one, you, you know, you, you lead with your performance and work on the field. He's he's one of those guys that's in great shape. Um, he trains hard. Uh, so I think it starts, you know, with with the way he prepares. I know you like your young receivers, but given their maturity and the fact that you had injury wide receivers, does it make it even more impressive what Mike Thomas did a year ago, the numbers he put up? He, listen, he's been been very consistent. And, you know, he'll be the next one, I'm sure. Mickey will be working. And, and I know that they probably already begun discussions. You know, I leave that to, to those guys to handle. But, uh, yeah, he's, you know, he competes. Um, he's durable. And... You know, he's someone that enjoys playing. Coach, what do you have you seen out of Alize Mack and the progress he's doing? He's doing well. You know, he'll take a couple good steps forward. He made some plays today, and then all of a sudden he'll have a few mistakes. That, you know, so like a lot of these rookies, you know, it's a, a transition, a big curve for him. But, you know, he made some plays earlier in practice, so he can run well. I, I think the detail, uh, play to play relative to what he's doing is something he's working on now.
So what are, what are some of the new things you're learning about Teddy Bridgewater now that he's actually sort of installing and running your offense for, for the first time? Well, I don't know that, I don't know specifically. I mean, I think it's a process relative to, look, he's played in the, in the league and he's been in some of these situations. And in fairness to Teddy, there are certain things that you would begin to build around strength-wise that I think he's exceptional at. And so, look, when you're in a uh, OTA or you're in a mini camp and you're, you, you have an installation for the masses, um, but he's extremely bright. Uh, I think uh, he's got really good arm talent. He's got a, a demeanor about him that, that suits the position well. And I think he's a good leader. So I, I think um, the reps he's getting obviously are, are important, not only for him, but for us as a team. Sean, how do y'all evaluate or coach up the quarterbacks when, when it's a blitz period that just uh, looks like it would have been a sack and then they throw, y'all tell them to continue to play? Well, in, in order for, for us to get the most out of a play, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to finish the play. Obviously, the, the rush is staying off the quarterback. And look, when you get into a two minute drill, it's a little bit more difficult because there is a competitive nature to it. So uh, at times we'll blow the whistle. There, there are a handful of sacks and shoot, our pressure period, I thought defensively looked really good. Offensively, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, what we would have liked, but um, to, to try to get the most out of a play, we'll be smart that way. Coach, obviously with, with Drew not here, how do you guys kind of uh, adjust packages? Or is it a little bit different with him not in the building? No, we still start at the same time. We're gonna still play with you know the brown round balls, and we're gonna we're gonna kick field goals. And um, look, when you're used to having someone like Drew, who's who's shoot been here going on year 14, um, obviously it's different. And yet, uh, look, other guys are getting uh, are getting the work, and you know his preparation. And, and there's that that part of you that that knows he's going to be obviously ready for training camp, um, but. But realistically, that's how our season can be sometimes. Uh, hopefully not at that spot, but when you go through injuries, um, you know, the, everything keeps moving. Is there, is there a limited amount you can learn pads, without pads? And how deep into the summer before you maybe have an idea of what you have? Well, yeah, I think to answer your question, there is a, a limited amount. You, you're still evaluating. You can learn a lot about how they learn. You can learn a lot about um, how they move. Um, but every year since I've been here, there's something about the pads that defines certain players that had it not been for the pads, they you, 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 might, you might not have uh, seen their talent. So we're slow to evaluate that way, but, but quick to evaluate if someone has trouble or, or can't learn. What are some things that uh, with Latavius, and obviously you mentioned him not being in pads, but uh, what are some of the aspects of his game that you've kind of seen that you're kind of impressed with? And you did mention, I mean, his he's smart. Kind of he's him. smart. He, he's look. He's a he's a, a guy that I think has good vision, um, and I think uh, you feel his leadership. I think he's a real good teammate. Um, so you know, we've seen the film, and, and we, you get an idea of the things he does well. Um, but those, those would be the first things that come to my mind. Sean, you had the rookie class, two big members, Reggie Bush and Marcus Colston a week ago. You've seen this 2017 heralded class develop. Do you see similarities between the two classes as they've developed a little bit? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, their, their similarity, first off, would be the importance of those classes, the importance of the 06 class relative to what we were able to accomplish in the years to follow a real good draft like that. And I think that same similarity exists in the 17 draft class. Um, I think the, the unique thing about the 06 draft class is the amount of players, you know, when you have two seventh round players, you know, playing, you know, 23 years in the NFL at, uh, and both, you know, having outstanding careers, um, that's unique. But, you know, hopefully, and in, in, we're, we're living it right now, uh, we're all around to to be doing the same type of thing with members of that class. But, uh, yeah, I think that the significance of when that class was drafted, I'm talking about 17 now, and, and, and getting us over the hump, uh, I think that would be the, 
the clear comparison for me. Coach, can you speak on the impact of Joe Brady and what he had on this organization and what you expect for him at LSU? He, um, yeah, he, listen, he, uh, number one, you know, came, came here with some pretty good insight relative to certain elements of the, the passing game. He's a tremendous worker and, um, you know, a guy that uh, you, you could rely on occasionally for, for some information relative to what a quarterback or a system might be doing. I, his, his background relative to the RPO stuff was, was very good. Um, and, I, and also someone who was good to work with and good to have on the staff. What have you seen early on from Cyrus Grayson, the LSU track star? Look, he runs well. I think it's just, you know, how quickly can he make that transition? And I know he's been with some other teams, but there's still some elements of, you know, not having had the background or the experience. But I think he's he's working hard at it. Each day he's made some plays to really get you excited. Purely as a passer, how has Taysom progressed? Good. Good. I think I think he's doing well. I thought he had a good uh, couple good periods today in practice. What goes into your evaluation of the mix between Alvin and uh, Latavius in terms of you know what you did last season with, with Mark and Alvin? Thank you very much. The evaluation or of, the, the plan? Of, the, the, like the mix of you know how much they're on the field. Is obviously yeah, I, look, we'll have packages for, for both those guys and probably a third. Um, and we'll balance what, what we try to do and, and be mindful of the tendencies so that they're not so steep for either of those players. Sean, just to follow up on uh, the rugby player trying out, how did that come about? Who, who pitched that to? Uh, it's too good of a story. I can't tell you. No, no. <laughs> if I told you a local artist text me <laughs> about this rugby player, here's what you have to understand this plane flies over. When someone sends you something about a player, obviously that happens a lot. And so if it's a college player, you know, I might forward it to Terry if it, or uh, to Jeff. If it's a pro player, to Terry. Um, and it, and it, if I don't forward it after a day, day or two, I'll think, ah, I don't want this to be that, you know. And so, you know, on someone's recommendation and you, you, you go about the process every time knowing that, you know, there might be 44 out of 44 where there's nothing to it, but then on the 45th one, there might be Taysom Hill, yeah. you know, in a different way. And, and I'm not making the same comparison. So, um, you know, it was an email, a text, forwarded on. Let's, you know, it's easy to work out a player who's right here. And uh, that was kind of it. Did, did anyone go and like watch one of his games or get no, no, any of his games? No, or? we just started, yeah. we saw highlight. Yeah. Highlight films. And is it the first rugby player you worked out, as far as you know? I don't think so. I'm guessing we've worked out others, but but recently. Just watching rugby, did you 